Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. This is a quick follow-up video to the last YouTube video I made, which was four APL solutions in 10 minutes. Hopefully this will be four more APL solutions in 10 minutes, as there were a number of comments uh, posted with alternative solutions that I wanted to also explore in this video. So I'm not gonna cover the problem here. If you haven't seen the original video, I will link uh, to that video in the top of the description down below. So go watch that first. And before we hop into the alternative solutions that were provided by uh, commenters, I wanna highlight two things. Uh, the first one is that any Unicode APL solutions that you post in the comments, I actually don't get to see because YouTube auto removes them. So um, you can do one of two things in the future if you're posting an APL solution. The first one is to go to um, tryapl.org, which will also be linked in the description down below. If you have an expression here and then you either hit Alt L or you hit this little hyperlink, um, it's gonna create a custom URL that's in your UL, URL bar, which is currently hidden because I'm in full screen mode. But if you click this and then copy and paste that and then post that in your comment, I can then look at the solution on APL, uh, tryapl.org. Or alternatively, you can just you know add a GitHub gist or um, a GitHub file and then link that. So that's the first announcement or the first thing I wanted to mention. The second is that uh, a user, um, or I shouldn't say user, but uh, Richard Park, who's an employee at Dialog and an APL uh, guru, at least compared to me, has created a response video to my original video, um, which is looking at a couple more alternative solutions and then also um, comments on some of the uh, performance considerations with respect to these solutions. So if you enjoyed the first video, definitely check this one out. Um, it goes into a lot more detail than I went into. And yeah, um, thanks Richard so much for making this. I really enjoyed it and, and learned uh, a bunch from watching this. And also I should mention quickly that at one point he he comments that I'm not using uh, this this logo here is for the American president lines, which I have 100% uh, aware of. I just like to A-B test with my YouTube thumbnails. Um, but I'll go back to using the dialogue orange box and then switch to uh, whichever APL logo those there's currently like um, an APL design, not contest, but sort of process that's going on right now to come up with a APL logo for all APL implementations. So if you're interested, I'll leave a link to this wiki to go check those out as well. With all that said, let's take a look at briefly at the comments and then we'll hop into our ride editor and pick up where we left off in our last video. So these are a couple of the solutions that were posted. Like I said, I wasn't actually able to see these in the comment section and neither will you. These are screenshots of my notification um, section of my YouTube uh, account. So I can see the previews, which is why some of these comments, I can't even see the, the full comment because it's just a preview. Because like I said, uh, YouTube auto deletes these, but we're gonna go through these one by one and um, check out the profile considerations, the performance considerations of these at the end. So this is where we left off in the last video. We had four solutions, A, B, C, and D. D was my favorite because it was using the outer product with the membership. Um, and we did some profiling, but uh, previously we actually profiled um, just using X. And uh, X is a pretty small test case. And as Richard pointed out in his video, you should use something a bit larger. And when you do that, you find that D, my favorite solution, is actually uh, the worst case because of the fact that we're doing membership on this nested array, and so you're doing a bunch of pointer chasing. So point being, when you're doing profiling with the compare X or the runtime, um, you should make sure that you're using a decently sized test case. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at the four solutions that I picked from the YouTube comments that got auto-removed, and we're gonna walk through those, and then we'll, we'll re-evaluate um, sort of the perf of these eight different solutions in total. So solution number five is the following from uh, someone's username who I'm sure it's not to their real username is Willwork, and uh, so we'll refer to this user as Will. Will starts off the solution by doing a uh, two composed with pick, and this is basically an alternative way of spelling the two, um, I believe it was index. Um, so this is the same, this is just a shorter way of doing index, whereas index can retrieve more than one element at a time. Pick can only retrieve one element, but we're only concerned with one element here, so this is actually the preferable way to do this. So if we do this, we get the middle indices of our strings, which are always gonna be a negative or a plus. And then once we do this, we do a dyadic iota on the string uh, plus space hyphen. And what a dyadic iota does is it's going to um, give you the indices 
of each of the strings uh, or each of the characters on the right where they map to on the string on the left. So because effectively what this is doing is uh, the following. It's uh, minus plus plus. Um, this corresponds to index three over here. This course and these two correspond to index one. So that's that's how this ends up getting um, evaluated. And if we do a uh, two minus on this expression, that gives us the negative ones and positive ones that correspond to the hyphens or the minuses and uh, addition signs. And so once we do this, we can just do a plus reduce, and we're good to go. So we'll call this solution e, not epsilon, <laughs> and. Um, that's our fifth solution. Our sixth solution from uh, Medi Dribby, I apologize if I pronounce this wrong. It starts off the same way doing the uh, two composed with pick uh, over X. Um, but on top of this, it's going to bind the following. It's going to uh, basically catenate um, using the commute operator uh, a one. So this is gonna give us negative ones and plus ones. Um, and so note that if we get rid of this commute operator, it's just doing one catenate to each of our characters uh, to create three strings, but we want the one to be on the right side of the binary operation, or the, I should say the unary uh, operation here. And um, then if we execute uh, uh, over each of these, um, it's going to turn the strings into numbers. And then once we have, once again, the negative ones and plus ones corresponding to the minuses and additions, we can just do a plus reduce and uh, call it a day. So this is going to be our sixth solution, which we'll call f. Uh, moving on to our seventh solution from raise time, once again starts off the same, does uh, two composed with pick over x, and then uh, this is just an alternative spelling of what we did before. So we can do catenate composed with uh, the character one, and we do this over, uh, which is going to give us uh, slightly different looking uh, negative ones and plus ones. And then from here, we're going to execute over each of these, and then we're going to do our plus reduce. So just an alternative spelling, basically, of the same thing we did before. And so we'll put this in a defund, because this one's a little bit trickier to convert to a point-free solution. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, our eighth solution from Rory Kemp. And this one's pretty nifty. So um, we do a hyphen composed with membership over x. Um, which is going to give us all of the strings that contain a hyphen. And then from here, we do a negative one uh, to the power, um, which is going to convert these to uh, negative ones and ones. So that's a neat little trick. And I actually don't know how this one decode works. Um, decode is basically an operation that given a sort of uh, encoding of a number, so you can have like a base two encoding or a base 10 encoding, and the base of that number, it'll convert it to a, a base 10 number. Um, so if we do this, somehow that gives us one. I'm not sure what the negative ones map to. So for instance, if I do uh, one, zero, one, uh, and we do two encode, that's going to give us five because one, zero, one is the binary representation of the number five. It's two to the power of two plus uh, uh, two to the power of zero, which is going to be four plus one, which is equal to five. So I'm not exactly sure how this is equivalent to plus reduce. Uh, Rory, if you're watching this and you want to explain, feel free to in the comment section down below. Um, but this will be our eighth solution. And so now I'm going to skip ahead to when we have all eight of the solutions uh, on the screen. So here are all of our eight solutions back to back. And we just hit enter on our profiling line. We will let this run and see what is the fastest solution. So you can see here clearly the solutions F and G that involved uh, the executes going from strings to numbers are by far the slowest. So we're going to delete those two and then run this again. And there you have it. E is our fastest solution, which, uh, if you recall, is the uh, two composed with pick and then using the dyadic iota. So a bit surprising that that is so fast. Um, but yeah. Pretty cool to look at all these solutions. And once again, the purpose of these videos is just to highlight how easy it is to explore different solutions in APL uh, because of the nature of the language. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something and have a great day.